Hi, my name is Colin Zacharias. I'm an ACMG guide from British Columbia, Canada. And today I'm going to talk about what to carry and how to organize your pack contents for a day of backcountry ski touring. thought a lot about how to make my pack light and still have all the essential items. I've spent some time simplifying my pack. Each day I will organize the contents according to today's conditions and make some items more accessible than others. I can carry everything I need in a small, relatively light pack. First glance it might appear like I've left some key items out, but I can assure you I've got everything I need for both the survival an emergency situation. My pack contents can be organized in several categories. The pack itself, what type of pack I like to carry, safety equipment, survival gear, first aid, repair kit, and those touring essential. In addition, I'm going to spend time talking about how I organize my pack contents, how I pack my pack. I'd like to introduce you to several items that I wear on my body as opposed to carrying in my pack. The first of these is my avalanche transceiver. The most important thing is that it's worn according to the manufacturer's recommendation, which is under an outer layer, and at least 20 centimeters away from any electronic device, such as your cell phone or radio. Most guides carry a licensed VHF radio. It gives them the ability to contact their company, ski patrol, rescue services, or helicopter companies. Carrying an FRS two-way radio is also a good idea for every backcountry traveler. My cell phone's kept in a chest pocket to keep the battery warm. I use it for photos, navigation, and emergency communication. Prior to departure, upload your digital maps, navigation tools, and train photos. If you're going on a multi-day trip, don't forget to bring a power bank. Now, who doesn't carry a Swiss Army knife? It's the best tool to scrape ice from underneath tack bindings, slices cheese, and it opens wine bottles. What more do you want? If I didn't have this, I'd have to bring a corkscrew. So the last thing I wear on my body is a notebook, pencils, emergency contact list for everyone I'm with, and I got a paper map that I can use for navigation, and a metal scraper to get the wax off my skis and the ice off my skins. I'm currently using an Arc'teryx 32 liter ski pack. I like it because of its clean lines, durability, and it's waterproof. My pack is often thrown into a snow-filled bed of a pickup truck or in a helicopter ski basket. It sometimes sits in the mud at low elevations on a warm spring day. It's important to keep your contents protected and dry. It's always good to have a pack that'll carry your skis and a rope. And think about whether you want to put your helmet on the inside of your pack or attach it to the outside. This pack has attachment points specific for that purpose. Now let's talk about what's in my pack. To start with, we're going to introduce the safety equipment. When we think of avalanche safety, everyone carries an avalanche transceiver, shovel and probe. We've already talked about the avalanche transceiver, so let's start with the shovel. My shovel of choice is a metal shovel, strongly made, one with an extendable handle. Fortunately, most shovels nowadays are well made. The Avalanche probe of choice for me is a carbon fiber probe, one with easily readable measurements, and one that's 240 centimeters in length or greater. In terms of individual equipment, everyone should have a headlamp in the top of their pack with fresh batteries. Now the next few items, they're important, but they're team items. They're to items we can distribute amongst the team. First and foremost, is a satellite communication device. I consider it essential. I never leave home without it. Secondly, a snow saw. My snow saw also doubles as a bush saw, has a blade about 40 centimeters in length, and can cut trees and bushes easily. Snow observation kit, it's great to have one of these in every group. You want a magnifying loop so you can identify snow grains. 
crystal screen where you can identify the grain size, a one meter ruler that you can use to measure layer height, and lastly, a three meter piece of cordelette, three millimeters in diameter, knots every 15 centimeters, that we can use to conduct snowpack tests by cutting snow columns. The next category of equipment that we're going to cover is for survival. First item is an 8x10 cell tarp. Critical piece of equipment because it can be used as an evacuation sled and also to make a shelter in case you have to spend the night. We've already discussed the snow saw that can be used as a bush saw. It's really important because you can also use it to make a shelter and a fire. A full length air sleeping pad, an extra large down jacket, spare down mitts and a wool hat can make the difference between life or death. In the case someone's injured, you have to get dragged out of the backcountry or you have to spend the night. I also bring 20 meters of lightweight quarter letter webbing cut into four equal lengths. I also bring a lighter, stormproof matches, and fire starter, which are essential to getting a fire started in winter conditions. Next up is the Backcountry Medical Kit, which has already been discussed in a Powder Cloud video. So please visit Gavin Dawson's video describing what should be in your Backcountry Med Kit. So make sure you bring an oral airway, a pocket mask, and gloves in case you need to provide assisted ventilation. Your kit should also include a tourniquet and hemostatic pressure dressing to manage major bleeds. I carry a variety of splints, including SAM splints, wire splints. I also carry an ultralight traction leg splint that incorporates extendable ski poles, two inch Velcro straps, and a cradle to support a long limb injury. The contents of repair kit are well described in the Potter Cloud article, How to Build a Backcountry Repair Kit by Rob Copolillo. I can do a quick repair on skis, poles, ski bindings, and clothing. The most important items include tape that works when it's minus 20 Celsius, heavy duty ski straps, and a ratchet screwdriver with heads that match the bindings of everyone within my team. My improvised evacuation sled is made up of the 8x10 tarp, the sleeping pad, the four pieces of cord ladder webbing, and the addition of eight wine corks as attachment points. We'll discuss and demonstrate the evacuation sled system in a future video. Please check back for that. Let's round out our gear list by talking about touring essentials. These are items that everybody usually carries. Let's start with skins. Everyone brings those. Food and water, pretty critical. One thing to remember is to bring a few extra bars in case someone in your group needs something at the end of the day. I always bring a lightweight thermos full of tea, and the other week it came in handy to de-ice a binding. Next up is ski goggles and sunglasses. I always bring both plus an extra set of lens for my goggles. I also bring a bar of wax that I can use on both my skis and skins. Don't forget sunscreen, pretty essential, even on cloudy days. And last but not least, our ski crampons. These are a valuable tool in firm snow conditions, but you have to have ones that fit specific to your bindings and ski width. Now that we've discussed the essential items, it's time to show you how I organize the contents of my pack. So to start with, I take all of the items and organize them into their own carrying sack. The first items I pack are the avalanche tools that go into their designated compartment. That's the shovel blade, the shovel handle, the snow saw, and the probe. Next up are the things that I think I'm not going to use, and that's the survival equipment. The tarp, evacuation sled equipment, that includes the cord ladder rope. Then I place the air sleeping pad and protect it with soft equipment like the traction splint, the mitts and spare ski hat. And then I place the first aid kit, the repair kit, 
down jacket. Now it's up near the top where it's easy to get at. Snow steady kit. Skins, which are right at the top. Along with my goggles and spare lens. Now importantly, I want the water and thermos where I can access it. For example, you can just zip, grab the thermos and slide it out. The last few items go in the top zippered pocket of the pack where they're easily accessible at any point. That includes my satellite communication device, my sunglasses and sunscreen, my CPR kit, my headlamp, and a couple of emergency ration bars in case someone's fatigued at the end of the day. I want the pack to feel comfortable on my back. I don't want too much weight in the top of the pack, too much weight in the bottom of the pack. Skiing is an athletic sport. You want to be able to rip it up. You want that pack to feel snug and comfortable. The key to all this is to carefully plan and consider your systems and make sure they are light, compact, and organized. Most importantly, you must be trained and practiced with the use of every tool that you're carrying. Familiarity with these items and their use will ensure you don't leave these essential items at home. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Please share it with your friends. Have a safe and fun winter and we'll see you out there.